Welcome viewers click the red button to subscribe and press bell icon to get all updates. Mr. Spicer, I hope you guys had a good weekend. It was definitely a busy one for the Trump administration. On Friday, the president signed several proclamations ahead of the start of the new month. Those are all available at whitehouse.gov. On Saturday, you may have not noticed, but it was the president's 100th day in office, for those of you not keeping count. The president took several significant steps towards leveling the playing field for American workers and businesses while visiting an Ames factory in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Ames has been making tools in America since before our country's founding. It's an example of the amazing persistence of the American spirit, the type of company that will be able to expand and create new jobs under the president's pro-growth economic agenda. He signed two executive orders at Ames that will help keep jobs and wealth in our country. The first fulfilled an executive order of a major campaign promise by directing the Secretary of Commerce to identify every violation and abuse of our trade agreements and to use every measure available under the law to end those abuses. And the second established the Office of Trade Manufacturing Policy, which will be led by Dr. Peter Navarro. This office replaces the National Trade Council and elevates it to a permanent office within the White House, sending an important signal to the world that the United States will no longer tolerate trade cheating while our manufacturing and defense industrial base suffers. He also signed a third executive order over the weekend establishing the American Technology Council, which will be led by Chris Little which is dedicated to modernizing the federal government's information technology so that it works more efficiently and effectively for everyone. And he wrapped up the day speaking to thousands at a rally in Pennsylvania. This weekend, the president also engaged with some of our longtime allies in Southeast Asia who are on the front lines against the fight against ISIS and other forms of terror through calls with the President of the Philippines, the Prime Minister of Singapore, and the Prime Minister of Thailand. Today is the start of another big week here. After signing a proclamation on Law Day, he stopped by the Kennedy Garden where around 100 members of the Independent Community Bankers of America kicked off their capital summit. Smaller banks are one of the driving forces behind economic investment and development in our communities, but they have been disproportionately harmed by the dramatic increase in regulation since 2008, declining in number by 20% since 2008. The president's pro-growth agenda, including instituting what he has called a 21st century Glass-Steagall, will allow these banks to spend less time complying with unnecessary requirements, many of which were designed to police much larger entities, and more time, infusing their communities and local small businesses with capital. It's also the start of Small Business Week. today. I think Trump will be participating in a conversation at the United States Institute of Peace with SBA Administrator Linda McMahon, and the Vice President will deliver remarks at the National Small Business Week Awards program later this afternoon. Back to the President's schedule. After speaking with the Community Bankers members, the President had lunch with Vice President Pence. Secretary of State Tillerson, and Secretary of Defense Mattis, as well as National Security Advisor McMaster before meeting separately with Secretary Tillerson. I also want to mention this morning that FEMA held a severe weather coordination call to discuss impacts on the remaining threat for continued severe weather across portions of the southwest to the Mississippi Valley which has already killed five people in Texas.
Secretary of Homeland Security Kelly participated on the call, and the White House is in contact with local residents in these affected areas. We'll have those communities in our thoughts and prayers, and encourage everyone to follow the directions of their state, tribal, and local officials to stay safe. Finally let me run down what we're expecting for the president's schedule this week. Tomorrow, he'll present the Commander-in-Chief Trophy to the United States Air Force Academy. Wednesday, the president will host the President of the Palestinian Authority for an official visit. And on Thursday, he'll host a National Day of Prayer event. And as I mentioned last week, he will then attend an event commemorating the 75th anniversary of the Battle of the Coral Sea aboard the United States Senate Intrepid, and meet with the Prime Minister of Australia.